Hello, everyone. Thanks for um, thanks for joining us. Hope you all are staying safe and taking care of yourself and the others around you. Let me start by introducing myself and my fellow presenters. I'm Vishal Rohila. I've been working at Okta for over five years, and I'm very passionate about helping customers solve their business problems. I have Ryan Schaller and Randall Stomp with me uh, presenting today about how uh, science platforms help businesses, more importantly, retail businesses, uh, transform their omni-channel uh, strategy. At the same time, we'll talk about how AAA is leveraging Okta to transform their digital experience, as well as building the omni-channel strategy. So before uh, we jump into the problem statement, let's understand what is a great omni-channel experience. Before I get into, um, before I get into the presentation, I have to make that statement that this presentation may contain forward-looking statements. So please refer to the accompanying slides for more information. All right, let's get started. So now looking at this picture from the business owner perspective, what is a great omnichannel experience? Every business has a web presence, websites, if you will, mobile applications, many, um, especially for retail businesses, stores and kiosks that people interact with, email uh, that uh, companies use to connect with their customers and partners and so forth. Social media presence is pretty important these days. Uh, call center, uh, at the same time, um, other digital personas as needed for the business. But if a business has all of that, does it mean they have a good omnichannel experience? Hmm. Not sure. Let's find out. Let me take an example. So when was the last time you ordered a latte at Starbucks? I'll take my, I'll take my experience first. The other day, I was running late for a meeting. In the morning, I, I woke up a little late. So um, I really needed that morning dose of coffee. So before I jumped into my car, I, I used my Starbucks mobile app to order a drink for me. So while I opened, opened the mobile app, it already knew my favorite drink that I usually order. Uh, it helped me find the location that was on my way to the meeting. Uh, while I was ordering, I chose my rewards points versus using the credit card that already was part of my profile. So once I finished ordering, I drove to the location. Uh, when I arrived at the, at the store, my drink was ready with my name written on it. And when I looked on the left, there was a huge line of 15 people. So I realized that I was able to shave about 15 minutes of wait at the store itself, which means it helped me get to my meeting a little earlier, well within time. So let's double click that, that user experience for a sec, because a lot happened there. From the ease of using the mobile app to the convenience of the app, knowing my favorite drink, to one click order via rewards points. Now all of those steps created a seamless omnichannel experience for me. So that not only made my interaction with Starbucks as a brand easier, but it also compelled me to choose the Starbucks over other chains if I have to um, order in future and I'm running late um, for my meeting already. So now let's look at how, uh, let me quickly move, okay. So this was, this was a good example uh, for a food and beverage industry. Now let's look at how some of the other uh, brands in apparel industry are transforming their omnichannel experience. Nike comes to mind. Nike has been transforming and growing their digital business tremendously with 35% year over year growth revenue coming from digital. Their mobile apps, there are many mobile apps. Uh, a couple of mobile apps that stand out, one of them is sneakers. It has 170 million total members today and it, the app itself accounts for 20% of their digital business, humongous. Now the app is pretty simple. It shows you all the sneakers that are available today. At the same time, uh, the new uh, models, colors, types that are coming out. You can create your profile, get alerted for discounts and sales in the area. You can also share um, the, um, the sneakers with the people you know, your family, your friends and so forth. It's amazing that, that how it transforms the experience for users and driving the business. Now, not only web, Nike is also investing tremendously in transforming their in-store uh, experience. 
and Nike Retail app comes to mind. So if you have a Nike Retail app on your phone and you walk into a store, the app immediately recognizing you as a user. It not only helps you to scan the product in the store, for example, if there's no size available, if there's the same size available in the area where you want to and so forth, it also helps you um, check out if there's a long line. So literally you can walk into the store, find what you want, check out from the app, save some time and, and go, with, uh, go with your business. So great omnichannel experience there as well. Similarly, there's a couple other logos you see Nordstrom uh, on uh, Lululemon. Both Okta customers are also increasingly improving their omnichannel experience via social media, deploying technology solutions, and store-focused processes and community outreach. Now, not only apparel industry, the global brands like Apple has tremendously invested in creating seamless experience, combining physical stores, web, and mobile apps to enhance their consumer experience, and in turn, driving sales. You will see the nice look and feel that all Apple brands have, slide wide, in the store, on the side, on the gadgets that we buy and so forth. Now from getting the appointment at the Genius Bar in the store via your uh, via apple.com, iCloud.com, or maybe the mobile, to being informed when someone is going to be ready to see you, to being notified if you're picking a delivery from the store, to one-click buying experience of your favorite iPhone. Like for example, I think a few months back uh, while I was upgrading my iPhone to iPhone 11, I went into the store, I chose the color, I talked to the associate, and the associate they helped me buy the phone in less than three minutes. And by the way, I chose the finance approval this time. I just didn't feel like paying 1400 bucks for the phone. But all of that happened in less than three minutes. It's amazing how they have connected the consumer experience. Now, last but not the least, I also wanna talk about Disney a little bit, a huge entertainment brand. Now, Digiti, uh, Disney's uh, omnichannel strategy is in the smallest details. The web properties uh, work perfectly across all devices. They are fully responsive in design. But the real omnichannel experience starts when you use their mobile application. Before you go to the park, you can plan your trip, the whole trip with mobile app. Once you get to the park, you can use the app to check how long the lines of the favorite rides are. You can find yourself on the map, so you can move from one area to the other. You can also plan your all, all day as well if you wanna change, for example, some rides are not ready for you and so forth. Now on top of it, Disney has also introduced magic bands. They just take the omnichannel experience to the next level. They are sort of like key to the park. They identify you, who you are in the park. You can use the magic bands to get into the rides, to unlock your hotel doors. If you're staying there, integrate your fast pass so you can skip the line. And it also helps you to actually store your photos. So it's amazing, connecting from planning the trip to all the way to everything you wanna do in the park with just gadgets. Amazing on own experience. Anyhow, um, now if I look at all these brands, they're doing some, some great omnichannel uh, strategies out there. But if you look, uh, are all the brands following the same practice? Let's look at some of the data. So. If you look at the left, in 2019, the total retail sales in the US was about $5,400 billion. And smartphone and PC driven sales contributed to over $500 billion out of it. That comes roughly about 11%. Now, if you look at the static sets on the right, that further validates. So at the top, you will see the decline in the e-commerce, uh, in the offline retail. And, and, the, and at the bottom, from 10.5 to 11.2 in Q1, Q2, and Q3, Q3 the um, the revenue for uh, e-commerce did increase. So that further validates that in-store uh, revenue sales, even though it's pretty huge, is declining, but online sales in the retail business in the US is increasing year over year. Now, the data set here sort of like validates what's going on in the market. So this data set shows you the total number of stores that closed in last 15 years in the US. If you look on the right in 2017, 18, 19, you'll see a, a steep curve going up, which is validating that there's number of closures in stores all across, which is a lot higher than 10 years ago. Now, what does that tell us? That tell us that a lot of brands are going out of business. A lot of businesses are closing their stores. Now, a, a study uh, kind of tells that 
a common factor here is a lot of these brands who were really dominant uh, a decade ago and they couldn't transform themselves in the digital game. So their their revenue didn't really go with uh, with the business and they kind of had to um, close the doors. So this is sort of synergy there in the data set that's that's coming out in the in the business as well. But what does it mean? Does it mean digital is going to take over the in-store experience 100%? Hmm, not necessarily. Let's find out. So people buy from people. We all know that. There's no denial in that statement. Now, by deploying combination of technology solutions in the store and empowering the human associates, which is a differentiating factor for, for in-store sales, the human associate. If you empower your human associates with technology, that is a key to success that's working out for all of the brands that I talked about to, to take advantage of the in-store experience and connecting with technology. So let's find out um, why, why that happens. So this shows the data set. Uh, this slide shows the data set of a study that happened among thousands of global shoppers that shop at these global brands and the thousands of human associates that work for these brands. So if you look on the left, about 50% of shoppers felt better connected with in-store associates if they were technology empowered. 56% associates also felt the same. On the, on, on the right, on two thirds, about 75% of in-store associates felt that deploying technology solutions just improves customer service um, off the board. So this further validates. Now we looked at why Omnichannel is important. We looked at some great examples. We looked at the recent trends. Now, if a business has figured out the omnichannel strategy and they've deployed, where do they go next? Now, the key part of deploying omnichannel strategy is to further drive top line growth and get efficient in connecting with your consumers. What does that really mean? So by deploying the omnichannel strategy, you can build models around consumer behavior. So for example, uh, where, do, uh, where do consumers shop, uh, tend to shop more? Do they go online? Do they go uh, to the store? Are there certain items or, or uh, brands or, or commodities more popular online or in store or vice versa? Now, collecting that data set and connecting the dots to drive proactive marketing decisions, advertising and advertisements and community outreach helps the help the brand drive the top line growth. So it's pretty simple. Track where your consumers come from in store, online, mobile app, community, build that consumer behavior, feed it back into your marketing platforms, your customer focused platforms, build a consumer profile and go connect with your customer on top of it, which helps you get to open more uh, channels so you can actually more, uh, you can sell more to your customers going forward. Now, if you look at um, all of these systems integration together, there's one core part here. How do you connect and build the consumer behavior? for in all of your systems. It, it all looks great on, on paper, uh, driving the omnichannel strategy, but it's pretty complicated. First of all, there is different um, strategies that work depending on the business you're in. And there's plethora of systems. You have master data management systems that can take care of your data. You have enterprise data warehouses. You have inventory you manage. You have your stores. You have your marketing systems. You have your content management systems. And then you have your mobile apps, web apps, all customer facing apps. Now, how do you how do you connect all that? So a typical way to to look at that, you can divide these apps into two uh, two sections. One is customer focus apps and the other is backend apps. So, for example, your um, call center system, your mobile apps, web apps, uh, your in-store experience, all of that is customer facing at, at the same time call center, as I mentioned already. But however, master data management, inventory systems, warehouse, and all of that are backend that either your employees associate or interact with or your partners and suppliers and so forth. So they're not customer facing. So let's divide that. Now, after dividing that, you can connect all those systems to build that consumer behavior. How do you do that? Let's look at that. So after you have divided these internal and external apps, the SIAM, the, SIAM, the customer identity platform becomes, becomes critical here. So for example, let me take an example. So if, if you are doing an advertisement over social, so for example, uh, you, you put up an advertisement at Facebook. Someone clicks that advertisement, they land on your web and mobile app. There's an identity uh, hop that happened from social to your web and mobile app. Now the person uh, browses on your catalog. Once they are done browsing, they choose the item and then they order. So from uh, social media 
to your web and mobile app, to uh, your catalog that's going to your master data management system and e-commerce platform, to your payment system. The identity traverses all across. You have to be able to connect those dots. That's why it's very important. And further, as I mentioned, feed it back to your marketing focus systems and take advantage of it. Now, this looks great, but let's see how, how complicated or, or at least a recommended approach uh, into what businesses are doing in the industry to build this omnichannel experience. So I'll start from the left. This is, by the way, a customer. This is a reference architecture for one of the customers who is doing the omnichannel strategy and transforming their digital experience with Okta. So on the left, as I mentioned, these are all customer focus apps. Now, each of these apps at least will need to capture the email in the initial interaction. For example, asking for the email to get up to date discount and deals in the future. Similarly, getting user info from other systems like live chat or third party community after such as yoga studio or a gym, if this is an initial strategy for, for a retailer. And then driving that identity data to the backend system. Now, most of these systems will support standard protocols for integration. A typical method for connecting all these systems is is uh, via API gateways. So most of the companies these days are in hybrid IT environment where they have uh, e-commerce systems, um, their cloud system, maybe Azure, AWS, GCP, they build applications on top of it. So all of the uh, cloud systems usually have API gateways. So API gateways help you stitch the data integration part of these architecture. However, API gateways don't necessarily always uh, support all the uh, identity specific integration so that that's where the customer identity uh, platforms come into the picture but let's wait for that so you connect all your front fa front uh, facing apps to the api gateways and then connecting the user experience in terms of customer identity so for example onboarding of the user registration of the users authentication of the users authorization of the users what they can access what they look at uh, reporting analytics which is other very important part connecting all that that's your Cyan platform right there, driving all that from front-end labs to via API gateways to the back-end systems. For example, your e-commerce system, CDP, your uh, data warehouse, and so forth. So connecting all that via standard protocols helps businesses start connecting dots in terms of identity. Now, one of the important part of this is at the front of the uh, user experience, which is web and mobile, which is becoming very crucial. If, um, if there's friction in that part, uh, customers tend to um, tend to basically leave your sites. So there is three more very important aspects that that help customers drive that frictionless user experience. So for example, you know passwords are amazing, and passwords have been around for a long time. Um, but we also know that creating a unique password, remembering it, and making sure not duplicating it all across due to security reasons is one of the most daunting tasks. Hence, passwordless experiences. Is, is on the rise, which is actually one of our aspects on the left side, true passwordless experience. Now, the other one is progressive profiling. Only ask for information needed at some point. So for example, ask for email first, don't ask for a lot of information. Second, when someone is checking out, then ask for maybe their shipping address. When they are paying, then ask for their credit card details. So ask for needed information where they are in their journey. So that's one part. That's what progressive profiling is. Some systems tend to help uh, customers on that a lot. The last part is per app experiences. So look at, let's look at example. Everybody's global. They have a lot of products, subsidiaries. For example, Nike has so many product lines. Nike, Nike Plus, Jordan, Air Jordan. So there's a branded experience for consumers who like that. Similarly, they have different subsidiaries like uh, Kolehan, Hurl International. All of these brands need custom branding and proposition for their customers. So how do you drive all that when you're doing frictionless experience with customer identity. So this is very important. That's where customer identity platform like Okta helps you drive that quickly and securely. Now that we talked about that, that brings me to AAA. So if you look at all these omnichannel strategies, you know, um, from driving consumer behavior and so forth, but what if you cannot even identify a user uniquely in your environment? That's very critical. So a good omnichannel experience or strategy starts from unifying your identity. Now AAA is one of the Okta customers has chosen Okta to solve unified identity problem, as well as building their omnichannel strategy. With that, uh, my friend Randall will introduce himself and helps us understand how AAA is transforming the experience for them. Randall? Yes, thank you, Vashal, for the great introduction. Uh, as mentioned before, my name is Randall Stomp, and I'm an architect at Club Labs, uh, part of uh, Auto Club of Southern California. 
My main focus in the last months has been on migrating millions of our existing users over to Okta, our new customer IDP. So before going into our use cases around customer identity, I want to get you familiar with the American Automobile Association, you might know as AAA. AAA is a federation of motor clubs served throughout the United States and was founded in the year 1900. The motor club I work for, Auto Club of Southern California, and an additional eight clubs formed Auto Club Enterprises and created the single largest club being part of the AAA Federation. Our club now serves over 17 million members in 21 states. The picture on the top of the slide is the building that used to serve as our main downtown Los Angeles office and completed in the year 1923. This is the building I also currently work in. The bottom picture was taken recently in the same building you just saw and now serves as our home for club labs. While we truly value our members in our more traditional brick and mortar branch location, our mission with Club Labs is to improve our members' digital journey through solid and innovative digital solutions in our different lines of business. You might know AAA as a company that provides you with a membership and tows your car you know, when your car is broken down. But our group, Club Labs, largely comprised of architects, engineers, graphic designers, and product managers are there to improve the digital experience for our different lines of business. Last year, we started our journey to use Okta as our customer IDP for our existing members. Since we already supported millions of our members throughout our nine clubs, the first order was to migrate our existing users and application for customer registration and login. We successfully integrated Okta for our web and mobile applications. In the past, each of the nine clubs had its own unique logons. So working towards a unified identity using Okta Universal Directory reduced our complexity with duplicate users. This will allow us to have a unified experience for every member, no matter what club they belong to. To continue our journey, we want to work on providing our members with an omni-channel experience with Okta as the core component uh, and acting as the glue that makes this all a reality. Having a stable, and feature-rich customer identity cloud, cloud platform will free us up, uh, will free up our teams to embark on this journey. So next up, I'll demo our current mobile application for our members. So let me start sharing my screen. All right. So what I'll demo today is four components related to our customer identity experience. The first component starts off with enrollment. This is broken up for us in two separate flows. It starts with creating a membership and then is followed by signing up for an online account. The reason for having two flows is because we're having numerous ways of becoming a AAA member. This could be in person at a branch or it could be through a physical mail uh, where you can simply activate your membership account or you can do it here through your online experience. So what I'll show you here by clicking on more, I can join as a new member. Once I do that, I have the ability to create a membership. Right now, since I'm brand new, my only membership that is available is a classic membership. So if I select that, I can fill out my first name, I can fill out my last name, I can continue down the path of filling out the remainder of the questions, such as my contact details, I can add additional members and additional membership options, which then allows me to finalize my membership account. After that is completed, I can also um, sign up for an online account, which I'll show you separately right now. I'm sorry, so let me go back. So register for my account, this is where I can uh, tie my existing membership number to an online account. So if I provide my membership number here and my zip code, um, next up, you know, and, and go through these steps, I can answer additional questions 
followed by uh, providing my login name and setting up my password. So that would really uh, complete my enrollment, uh, which after that fact, I can uh, identify myself going to the uh, going to the applications in needs either on the web or on the mobile mobile app. So let me go to the uh, native mobile app. So I showed you the first component, which is enrollment. Second component here is identi identify. So since I already set up my account, I can provide my username and password in these fields, uh, which allows me to log in. Or since I've already done this in the past, I can use my phone features, um, in this case, uh, Face ID on uh, iPhone to log in. So by clicking on the little face icon in the password field, I'm able to log in. So basically what's happening here in the background, I'm actually being verified by Okta in the background. And now I uh, identified myself being who I am and having access to the uh, application. So that is the second component, identification. Moving on to the third component is authorization. And the best way to show you this um, is showing you one of the existing OAuth flows that we have in our apps. So by going to more and clicking on my insurance policies, I can see that I currently don't have an insurance policy associated with my account. So what does this mean? Ultimately, it means um, I never signed up for any kind of insurance in this case. So that's why I don't show anything. If I did sign up and I, if I did have an insurance product associated with my account, it would show up in here and I would be able to manage it from here as well. Uh, if I want to, I can get a quote to add it on to my account. So that's the third component, authorization. In addition to that, once I'm logged into my account, I have uh, pieces available to me that are part of the regular member experience that are available to everybody. So uh, this ties into the fourth component, which is our journey towards an omni-channel experience. So our goal with AAA is to provide our members with the best possible service where we basically give them access to what we consider our different lines of business. So thinking about travel, discounts, road services, financial, uh, or just some of these examples. So if I scroll down, you can see that I can manage my membership here. In addition to that, I have the capability to see my discounts within close proximity of me uh, and so forth. So uh, in addition to that, if I move on to the different tabs, I have the capability to uh, go in bigger details. Uh, for example, looking at my discounts based on category, I can book travel uh, that is available to me as a member. And lastly, um, roadside services, where the phone app will determine my location or my phone would actually determine my location. Um, if the address is considered correct, I can set my breakdown location and move on to basically send the tow truck, tow truck on its way in, in, in just a couple of minutes. So that is really my summary of what our current membership experience is like on a, on a mobile phone. So moving on, I'd like to ask Ryan from Okta, so he, we have just seen the, the membership experience. What if you wanna make some of these features available to non-members? So how could Okta help with that without us, you know, developers having to work on creating everything ourselves? So Ryan? That's a great question. Looks like I can share my screen right here. So it's a good question and it actually brings up a good segue for what we call the Okta Identity Engine. It's something that's coming up for Okta is considered to be an upgrade. And I'm Ryan Schaller. I just wanted to give a quick introduction about myself. I've been a developer for over 20 years now and have done pretty much everything from security, infrastructure, and development. And when I think about your problem statement around having non-members come into AAA, it does remind me back to what we have over in Okta is the identity engine. So it's a way for us to be able to understand the context of that user. So in this case, it's a non-member coming into AAA. And if you're looking at this, these two types of use cases side by side, most likely this is what the pattern that they're gonna follow. The first person is going to browse the app, 
potentially just look around at the services available for AAA. And the second pillar would be really a ready to transact person, someone who's willing to be able to purchase something from AAA, again, being a non-member scenario. So it's a good way for us to be able to provide that. And in Okta's identity engine, we really break apart what traditional components, which were typically associated with Okta, and it really allow you to be able to provide a low barrier to entry for those non-members, and then to be able to progress their profile and also potentially provide a passwordless experience overall. So let's dive in. So over, our, over here on my left side, I have a AAA site and I'm gonna come in as a non-member, and it looks like I have some available services for me to potentially choose. Let's go ahead and check travel. When I click on that, what I'm presented with is a registration form, it looks like. So from here, I can actually punch in my information, and I can choose to go ahead and receive some consent information, um, but I don't wanna receive any promotional emails from my partners. So let me go ahead and click register. Now it's important to note that in my app config, I actually have three different OIDC apps configured. So what you just saw was the initial policy or initial app that is basically associated with people who are just kind of browsing by and looking into the site, just like we just saw. So if you look on the Okta side of the configuration side, you can see that I've actually generated that form from elements configured in this policy here. So this is the enrollment process. So from here, I'm asking for my email, first name, and last name, as well as that is that consent information. The cool thing about that is I've actually been able to send that over to Salesforce as a new record and fin fi finish up with a Slack channel notification. That notification sound you just heard was this process going into effect. And if we go in and we actually look at that Salesforce record, we can see that Randall, or in this case, Ryan Stomp here was just created. And when I click on the details of that user, I can see that they've selected to just have marketing email consent. So it's a good way for a person to have a very low code solution to be able to not only allow a person to browse the app, but also be able to drive that into other channels like the Salesforce and marketing teams to be able to effectively market to me as Ryan Stomp in the future. Um, the other important thing to note is that when I logged in here, I wasn't actually presented with anything from a password perspective. And it's because of this policy associated with that OIDC app. I've, I've selected to have no authentication associated with that, and it makes it really easy for me to start browsing and get information without actually um, being very intrusive to the user. Cool. So now let's go over and look at this travel package that I have selected. This looks good. Um, so I'll go ahead and click the Purchase button. And what this does is this actually is asking me to verify who I am. And it's by doing this, it's saying, let's go ahead and ask me to do this magic link. Okay, that seems interesting. So let me go ahead and select that. It says that an email has been delivered to my RyanStomp39 at Mailinator. So if I actually go over into a different browser, you can see that that email verification link is just sitting there waiting for me. When I click on that, in this Firefox browser, I can just choose to verify it looks like. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And now it's progressed me to the next part of, of collection of information around my, my user. So here I am and it's asking me what time's a good time to call me. I'll say night. And then I'll go ahead and provide a phone number uh, test purposes. And I'll go ahead and hit submit. So it looks like I've uh, completed that transaction. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the policy that drove all that experience. Again, I was able to associate this OIDC app that was configured to enforce that a magic link must be invoked or a magic link scenario must be uh, completed in order for me to complete that purchase. So it verifies who I say I am and it allows me to ask for additional profile elements for this uh, secondary enrollment policy. So in here, I'm actually choosing to ask the user for when is the time that I would like to be contacted, as well as the phone number. So the cool thing about this is that I could actually choose to say that maybe let me trigger another webhook that says notify that user or go ahead and call them tomorrow to just confirm that everything's all ready to go or if there's any changes that need to be made, uh, they are able to see that. So awesome. 
really easy way for me to have, again, a, a cool experience that started out from me just browsing the website and then finished up with me uh, doing up a, a purchase or a, a step up authentication sequence and progress my profile throughout that whole process. Let's do that same sequence of events, but this time let's just choose to see if we can do something a little bit different. So again, I'm gonna pretend that I coming back in here, like clicking on that purchase screen, and I'm gonna go ahead and auth in with no authentication here so by just identifying myself with my email address. Looks good. And now I'm here again at that travel site. Uh, that package looks good, but maybe I do want a discount. So for a non-member of AAA, we're reducing the low barrier to entry by saying well, anybody can come in and, and easily purchase uh, items or services. And in this case, it's a call to action to be able to get a discount, but the trade-off is to become a AAA member. So when I click discount or get a discount, it's asking me for some additional information. So like the address info and zip code. So it looks like I live on 123 Bishaw Lane. That's SF California. And let's just go ahead and put a zip code in there. So additional information that you could use to verify that one, is this an actual address? And two, is this something that the information that I would potentially need? Okay, it looks like that's what I need. I'll go ahead and pass that over. Now you can see that the discounts applied. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the Octa side of the house and see what the policy. So that OIDC app is actually saying, again, no authentication associated with, just like the initial policy that we had. And then also the progressive elements that are different from what we've seen so far, some additional information that collects just to basically start my membership application with AAA. So it's a good way, again, to be able to validate information that is being supplied from the user and also being able to do this whole complicated use case with a very low code solutioning from Octa side of the house. Um, and if I decided to just go ahead and finish that purchase, it takes me to a very similar situation where it's asking me for a magic link sequence. And it looks like I'll go ahead and click that again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click this on my phone. And the simulation here is really to just showcase if someone was at a kiosk or someone walked into the AAA uh, offices, I could start my journey from there or I could start my journey from home and potentially finish there. But either way, I can be able to make sure that my authorization or my uh, verification of who I am still stays within the power of me as an individual because I have access to this email. So if I go click verify, that again progresses me. So just one second, let me click that. This progresses me back over and I'll go ahead and finish this verification. And then it's asking me for, again, a, a good time to call me because maybe that sequence has changed or maybe that, that preference has changed. So again, I'll select night and there you have it. I've now finished that purchase process. So a very easy way for me to get that information that I wanted to be able to, to have to do the purchase transaction with a step up authentication and really showcase Okta Identity Engine as well as how to be able to solve that non-member problem that Randall is looking to solve for AAA. So if we go back to everything now, we're basically now wrapped up with our demos and opening everything up for q and I'll tee this back over to Vishal to kind of close us out. And thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to our, our, our talk today. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Um, so yeah, we, if we quickly summarize, uh, we looked about why omnichannel experience is important how uh, industry trends are, are requiring for a successful, seamless customer experience. Then we talked about how our customer AAA is leveraging a unified identity, which is one of the basic foundation to get to omnichannel experience, and how AAA will further go down and improve the omnichannel experience by Arta. As uh, Ryan mentioned, let's open it for Q&A. Thank you.